it's Palm Sunday. I'm Mert Shane, pastor here at Kiyoki Chapel, and I welcome you to our worship service. Um, we look forward to having you today, as well as uh, we look forward to you worshiping with us on Easter Sunday uh, by video. Um, we hope to be having our worship services back in the sanctuary in April, uh, and so please stay tuned. Let us begin our worship. Let the mind of Christ be our mind. Let the humility of Christ humble us. Let the obedience of Christ teach us to obey. Let the service of Christ inspire our service. Let the humanity of Christ shape our humanity. Let the glory of Christ lead us to glory. Let us pray. Precious Jesus, help us to walk alongside you and bear witness to your journey this week. From table to trial to cross to grave and to empty tomb. Inspire us to work with one another for a world over which heaven and earth rejoice. Give us the strength to never forget your divine image in everyone we meet this week, even when we are swept up by the crowd. Amen. Our children's sermon today is all about Palm Sunday. And we tell the story of the worshipers of Jesus parading as he paraded in on that cult. And so they put down their cloaks and they put down the palms and waved them generously, recognizing Jesus' entrance. And so we too recognize Jesus' entrance today. And we worship him. You now recognize all the transitions that Jesus went through in this coming Holy Week. And so we, as being a part of the crowd, need to show our love because God sent Jesus here to show his love. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to love us. Amen. As we prepare for our prayer today, we want to recognize those that are on our prayer list, those that uh, are struggling, those that are alone, uh, those that are in recovery, uh, as well as all those that uh, we recognize as giving their all uh, so that we might all be safe. So let us pray. Holy Creator, Holy Teacher, Holy Wisdom, dare us to respond to you beyond the limits of our love. Dare us to lay aside our quick anger for a lasting curiosity and an abiding humor. Dare us to forget all the ways we can separate ourselves from others and to learn all the ways we can bind ourselves to their challenging uniqueness. Dare us to reveal the whole of your image in us instead of a few convenient parts. Dare us to risk all that we are to become all that you wish us to be. Dare us to mean what we pray. O 
companion God, you have shown us what it is to be a faithful companion and true neighbor to our sisters and brothers. We almost always intend to follow where you lead. We almost always mean well, and sometimes we accomplish our intent. But there are times, many times, when we become self-absorbed or angry or afraid or proud or tempted by worldly messages of greed and violence and entitlement. Beckon us to repent with our whole hearts. Forgive us our broken choices so that with you we may reveal the beauty a universe made holy with love and respect. O oh God, we lift before you those that are on our prayer list and we lift up Pat and her recovery and Paul and Barbara and Pat and her aloneness. Bless all of them as they live fruitful lives. Help us to truly be your ambassadors of goodwill. Help us to reach out to others. Guide and direct us and help us to help those that are in need. The homeless, the hungry, the helpless, those that have been lost and are alone. We pray for our country as we go through so many different battles of violence, and of storms. Help us to reach out to one another in a caring and loving fashion. We pray for all those that are in harm's way. We pray for our military, wherever they may be. We pray for our essential workers who are striving to help us at every need. Guide and direct us as you would have us to go, so that we can truly be your faithful servants and give you the thanks and the praise. We pray in your Son Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We also would like to take time to give thanks for all those that have sent in contributions, those that have uh, sent in their offering and their tithes so that we might continue our mission. And so let us pray. Our Heavenly Parent, we know that we are the great beneficiaries of your grace, forgiveness, and mercy. Grant that we might, too, Offer the others the tokens of kindness that have nourished us through our years. Help us remember as we pass on the things that you have entrusted to us, then we become stewards of the divine things. May our gifts bless us as well as others. 
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell them, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead of and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gloria. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Scriptures, whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with a ready willingness to hear its truths, heed its calling, and enact its lessons. And let the words in my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our text today is taken from the book of Psalm. And I'm reading from chapter 118, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord, he, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. Lately I've been watching probably a little too much television, and I've noticed that the shows that I've been watching have been on home repairs. 
And on some of those shows, they show people dismantling portions of the home and then rebuilding them making sure that they have are up to code and doing the proper thing. Oh, a lot of these shows, they take the time to dismantle in such a manner that they can keep certain pieces and then they recycle them. And in other shows, they just totally destroy whatever they have there. And so they can't do anything about putting it back together. It's no use to anyone. They simply put it in the rubbish. They put it in the dumpsters and haul it away. Sometimes even the rocks that they choose, I've seen them carefully placed to the side so that they can be used again. And I've also seen them push them off their ledges and just shatter them and break so that they can't be used for anything but small rocks. Sometimes we look at our lives in that same fashion. Sometimes we take care of things and make sure that things can be reused so that others can use them. Sometimes we totally destroy things to the point where no one can use them. Recognize that in this song, it's a story about what God can do, turning those small rocks, turning those stones into something productive, something that others can use turning our lives into lives that are productive and useful. Oh, many times we make mistakes and we don't follow the teachings of Christ. We make all kinds of errors and think little of ourselves in the process. Instead of looking at the gifts that God has given us and the great things that we can do with those gifts. Because we never know what God has in store for us. What he can produce out of the rubble. This story talks about that capstone, the cornerstone, that other people, that the builders have thrown away. Just like in those stories that I told you about the house builders. But God has chosen the stone that they threw away to be the foundation, to be the cornerstone, to be the capstone, to place the building, to start the foundation. God does the same thing with us. What other people have said is, you're no good, or they think little of us. God has given every one of us gifts that we can use to build ourselves and to build others, to help this world to grow and prosper. Recognize that God is always at work within us. And so we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves and those around us so that we can continue to show God's love. Recognize that we can each be transformed and make a significant impact in the world. So often in our lives, people think too little of one another. They want to totally disregard them because of their age, because of their gender, because of how they look, their size, their shape, their color. God has blessed every one of us with gifts. And so even though others don't want to utilize those that they think are less than, God has a plan for each of us. And so we need to recognize all the gifts that God has given us. 
whether we are tall or short, whether we are stout or thin, regardless of our ancestral backgrounds, our native lands, God has a plan for us. God is building as we build, as we each grow and prosper. And so our responsibility is to entrust, entrust our life to God, to see what great things God can do, even with the most, the least, and the lost. Recognize what God has given you. Recognize that you are not to judge others, but you are to love one another. To show that same love that God has shown you. Regardless of what the other looks like, you are to share and love each other. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for each and every day. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you. You have given each of us gifts. Help us to use those gifts to help others. Guide us, direct us, so that we can prosper and live in this world together to show your love wherever we are, wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for our benediction, based on Ephesians 3, verses 18 and 19. Throughout this holiest of weeks, may you have the power to comprehend with all the saints how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, both now and always. Go in peace. Stay in love with God. Be good to yourselves and your neighbors. And may God bless you now and always. Amen.